Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mix Hacks. Um, so the topics are running a little bit thin, you know, um, but there is one more thing that we need to discuss for the series, and that's labeling. Um, in the last episode, of course, we did uh, systems. Now, once you've put your recipe, you know, in the system and you've mixed it up, the final thing that you need to do is you need to be labeling your bottles. Okay, and each of us are going to be talking about what we do. Um, I'm going to start off, um, and I actually uh, Richard recommended this little hack uh, for me. So, for many people out there that are not really interested in um, you know the glitz and glamour how far you can take it with labeling um, the easiest way to do it is masking tape um, this masking tape over here is uh, just thick enough for me to to write on it and then I've got a sharpie as well and then what what it ends up with is is just something like that that's uh, Dayberry cheesecake and that's really how far um, I go with with my labeling. I keep it quite simple. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just open up. Richard, what do you do? Okay, I'm pretty much the same. Uh, this is my high tech labeling system. I don't even have a sharpie. I've got like a pen here. Um, so you probably won't be able to see this, but there we go. So all, all I do is I just write the name or an abbreviation of, of the name like this is I've got killer C for, for killer custard. What I then do below that is I put the type of nick that I used in it. Now, uh, you know, I have several types of nick going at, at, at one time. So I just, you know, briefly um, outline what, what nick I'm using just so that if it is harsh when it comes out of the steeping cupboard, I don't have to try and remember what nick I used in the, in the mix. I know straight away, okay, if it's peppery, then it's probably a problem um, with this type of nick. And then finally, I just put a mixing date, and that helps me to check um, when I take the, the bottle out of my uh, mixing cupboard. Um, helps me to check that it's, that it's steeped enough. Now, what I do as well is that I mix in... <coughs> Uh, glass bottles. So I put the masking tape label on the glass bottle. When I decant it into, you know, into the dripper, I just peel the masking tape off the glass bottle and just put it onto the um, the dripper bottle. Once I've finished the juice, tear it off, throw it away. You sometimes get a small residue of the masking tape backing on the um, on the plastic of the bottle, but that washes off. You know, when you when you're washing the bottle to rinse it out and get rid of the flavour residue, that generally washes off. Um, the labels don't last too long, but with DIY, you don't need them to. I mean, you're not going to be using a juice two years after you you mixed it. It's generally going to be weeks at most. So, you know, masking tape is fine for me. I don't really see any need to to go all high tech. But you know, to each his own. Deets, what do you do? Um, basically. With a labeling machine, I just label everything. What I normally put on is the name. Sometimes the mixer, depending on the recipe. So it's the name of the, the mix. So strawberries and cookies or something. Then the nick content and the date. So I would put, for instance, two milligram and the date that I mixed it. That would be the only three things I, I label. I used to do the VG and PG ratio, but I mean, it always stays the same. So I just dropped that out. So it's name, new content, and date. But unfortunately, this thing runs through batteries and tape. So it's not really the most efficient way. And I always seem to go back to this too. I mean, tape and write, and you're done. That's it. So at the end of the day, I, I use both depending if I – I like mixes I give to people or to friends. I like labeling it with, with, with the machine. My own stuff, I just put onto these um, paper masking tapes, same as, as you and Richard. Yes, that's one of mine. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's mine. Labeling machine or tape, and it's normally name, new content, and date of mix. Daniel, how do you do yours? All right, so I started, I think, like you guys as well, 
with like pretty much anything that I could stick on a bottle and then just write it out. And then um, I started like getting a bit tired of just like the like plain white labels, just like small cover. I wanted like something that could cover the whole bottle. Um, so I got bigger labels that were like for a actual printer, like a brother, but um, they're a bit wider. And then I moved on to these, which is, um, I'll just pull out this eight labels on here. Um, and these, these ones are a little too big. There's one size smaller. That's actually a bit smaller than this. So these are the one of fives by 74, but I think there's a 96 by 60, which fits better. So I've been having to cut these to fit, but then you get like a, a pretty decent uh, label. Um, and I, I generally just write what I've made and then what milligram nick it is. Um, sometimes I'll put data on if it's a long steeper, like something like a custard that I want to sleep for a month and I can at least track it. Um, but I, my steep cupboard moves pretty quickly. So I, I usually know when I mix something up just from batching on ATF. But uh, what's cool about these is if you um, use something like Canva, you can create your own labels and then you can actually print them like with a template that Tower gives you. So you can create essentially something that looks like a high-end juice, but it's your own stuff. Um, and then you can trick your friends. Tell them it's some commercial juice, you know? So yeah, that's what I do. And Liam? Um, yeah, uh, when I started, uh, when I started making my own recipes, I got very, very excited and uh, went out and bought a lot of uh, Avery, uh, blank Avery labels and then downloaded the Avery software and actually created my own, my own labels using that software. So that's the sort of thing that I was actually creating. But what I found was, um, it actually started becoming quite expensive for me doing it that way because I was making so many sample recipes and everything else that in the end I've ended up resorting to uh, pretty much what uh, Rich Dietz and Theo do. I uh, get a bit of note paper. I just write the name of the recipe, the PG, the VG, uh, the milligram and when it was mixed and then just snip that out with a pair of scissors put on my ball and cover it over with uh, clear sticky tape, which uh, actually stops any uh, juice residue from getting onto it as well. So if you do tend to drip and it leaks down the ball, you don't have to worry about forgetting what you've actually made. And uh, that's the only thing I do. Um, when, I'm actually making, when I'm actually making from one shots, what I'll do, I'll take the one shot ball and I'll carefully peel the label off the one shot ball and then stick that onto the bottle that I've actually uh, made up. Um, one of the things that can happen with that sometimes is it'll uh, stick on there and it'll tear. So just get a hairdryer, warm it up very gently, and it should uh, loosen off the uh, the residue back in and you can just peel it off nicely and stick it on. And that's how I go about my labels. Yeah, one thing about uh, the, the masking tape though is um, and I think this, the cello tape or the clear sticky tape, same thing, right? Um, which it's a little bit better on those is um, the masking tape. If, if you have to make a hundred percent sure that the bottle that you are using, you know, that you've wiped it down and it has dried or that your fingers, because generally when you mix up, you know, you get a little bit of VG or PG on your fingers, stuff like that. But if, if you touch your bottle and you try and stick your masking tape on there, it just won't stick. You'll, and you'll end up using three or four bits before you actually get to the one that sticks on the bottle. Um, so that's the only thing. And I found, and I also did the, the clear sticky tape um, with the Sharpie on the clear uh, sticky tape. And, and that seems to work really well as well. Um, it, it sticks a little bit better than masking tape. That kind of covers what labeling is all about, guys. Are we going to add anything else to this? Yes. Do any of you guys put on your labels, this product contains nicotine, which is an addictive substance? <laughs> <laughs> I don't You're use gonna nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have the FDA on your tail if you don't. So just remember that. Uh, I've uh, got it in, in white tags <laughs> on the white okay. label. On the other white label. Yeah, it's true. there. You just you know, yeah. have to look you carefully. Have to, you, you, so you white tags, yeah. You have to prevent the Russian agents. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the show. Uh, remember, if you want to support us, look in the description of this. You'll find um, our ATF profiles, ELR profiles, and whatever. Also links to some one shots and stuff that we've got available. But thank you so much for watching the show, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.